Vietnam vet from Missouri is behind bars half a world away after a mysterious mission involving a Nobel Prize winner under house arrest. This bizarre case is unfolding in Myanmar, a country also known as Burma. This isolated Southeast Asian nation is run by a brutal military regime that silences critics and suppresses its own people. They've been doing that for a while now. And now the regime is holding an American citizen, accusing him of trying to reach a pro-democracy activist. Take a look. It's an understatement to say the relationship between this woman and this man is a mystery. She is Aung San Suu Kyi, a 63-year-old Nobel Peace Prize laureate who, following democratic elections in Burma, was blocked from becoming prime minister and placed under house arrest by the ruling military junta for most of the past two decades. He is John Yetta, a 53-year-old American from a small town in Missouri. How did he suddenly get involved in Burmese politics? Last week, Yetta allegedly made his way into Suu Kyi's tightly guarded compound in Burma and swam across a lake to her house using homemade flippers. He spent the night there, a violation of Suu Kyi's house arrest. Suu Kyi's lawyer told CNN she asked Yetta to leave, but he refused, saying he was tired from his swim. Now both Suu Kyi and Yetta are in prison. Some human rights activists think that's exactly what the Burmese government wanted. Anything unusual happening in, in Myanmar especially in terms of uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, we always look with suspicion because the government of Myanmar always tries their level best to find an excuse to lock uh, Aung San Suu Kyi up. T. Kumar, himself a former political prisoner, has studied Burmese politics for more than a decade. There are all kind of conspiracy theories floating around. One is, of course, whether he is working with the military. We don't know. There aren't any known connections between Yetta and Burmese politics, so there are many unanswered questions. Among them, how was the unemployed Yetta able to pay for his trip from Missouri to Burma? How did he enter a country known for being strictly closed to foreigners? And how could he sneak undetected into Suu Kyi's heavily guarded home? Reports say Yetta, who's a Mormon, told Suu Kyi he came to pray with her. Friends and neighbors describe him as friendly and intelligent, but also reclusive. I would say around here he pretty much sort of keeps to himself. He has his own... I don't know if agenda is the right word, but he has his own priorities and, and he's working toward those. Neighbor Sayeta, father of seven children, was writing a book on faith-based heroism. It's also reported he attempted to reach Suu Kyi last year, but was unsuccessful. Yetta could face 15 years in prison for immigration violations and trespassing. Activists say the timing of this incident could not be worse. If Suu Kyi is convicted, which is almost a certainty, she'll be unable to be a candidate in next year's elections. They are using an incident to, to punish the victim, thereby all, also, also ensure that Aung San Suu Kyi is not free for the upcoming election. Suu Kyi begins trial on Monday, a lengthy process according to her supporters, who've little hope she'll be dealt with fairly. Yet as trial also starts Monday, he's yet to be given an attorney. Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter Ani DeFranco is also an activist and outspoken on Burma's treatment of opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Ani DeFranco joins me now from New Orleans. You, you've been a vocal in your support of Aung San Suu Kyi for a long time. There are a lot of people, though, in this country who don't really know her story. Why is she such an important figure? Well, um, I think it's her situation is sort of analogous uh, to Nelson Mandela. You know, she is... Uh, the leader of the democratic movement in Burma. Um, she's been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. She's an incredibly inspirational figure, I think, for all people, uh, not just the people of Burma. She has been confined to her home, a home which is literally crumbling around her mm. for 13 of the past 19 years. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a woman who was elected to run this country, and yet she hasn't been given that opportunity, and she's been a prisoner for 13 years. I mean, it's just extraordinary. It is. It is extraordinary. Yes, she was... Her party was elected uh, democratically uh, in 1990, I believe, uh, against all odds. And uh, the military dictatorship, that was not what they had in mind, so they just arrested her. You, you mentioned her in the same breath as, as Mandela, and it, mm -hmm. it's probably an apt analogy in that Mandela, you know, after spending his lifetime in prison, could have very easily given in to hate and could have mm -hmm. very easily, you know, preached hate as he left prison. Uh, but he didn't do that. In fact, he, he was embracing those who had uh, imprisoned him. And, and Aung San Suu Kyi has a similar 
way of looking at things. I mean, a, a, this yeah. person who has been imprisoned and had horrible things done from her has not seen her children, has not seen her husband, has been separated from her own family all this time. Uh, this has not made her a hateful person. She still speaks about you know, the people in the government and the military there as not being the enemy of, uh, you know, the citizens. And uh, that, you know, you shouldn't look at them as your enemy. You should look at them with compassion and as fellow victims uh, of a very uh, problematic situation. The, the first story I ever did as a reporter was I snuck into Burma and hooked up with some students mm -hmm. fighting the Burmese government. You traveled to Burma a few years ago. You say the, the, the trip was life-changing and mind-altering. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved in, in Aung San Suu Kyi's cause? Well, I contributed a song to a benefit record uh, put together by an organization called U.S. Campaign for Burma. And then they invited me to go there and uh, bear witness to the situation firsthand. So I went and we spent about a week um, mostly in Thailand on the Burmese border, uh, going to, you know, refugee camps. And I met with political prisoners, former prisoners, you know, people who had twisted legs and, you know, who had been crippled by torture in prisons there, you know, because they were fighting for democracy. And Is change possible in Burma and, and can people around the world actually make a difference? Because there's a lot of folks like yourself who have been active on this for a long time and yet, you know, the money pours into the government through uh, big oil contracts and, and, and big mm -hmm. multinational companies and, right. and Aung San Suu Kyi is still in prison. Right. Well, I think change is absolutely possible. I mean, it's amazing what the Burmese people themselves have been doing, you know, and I think with a little bit of help, uh, they could truly succeed in gaining democracy for their country. I think that America uh, should lead the charge uh, to help them to answer their cries. Uh, well, uh, Ani DeFranco, I appreciate uh, all your efforts and appreciate you being on the program tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you.